Battle of the Chefs walks away with a feature exclusive in Out of Africa magazine, $10,000 in cash and prizes, and the title of Best Chef in Zimbabwe. Previously on TM Pick and Pay, Battle of the Chefs. I love that you're putting yourself on the plate. Wow. Week 13 of a Herderfield cooking marathon, and what a roller coaster ride it has been. This tastes like some traditional remedy for a very serious ailment. It's a disaster. Where's more? If you're going to walk as if you're a cheap toy with batteries running out. No, we, we are not tasting. Do you believe in miracles? I've just seen one miracle here. I just want to say thank you. This should be the benchmark of what you want to see. Oh, my hat. And I just have to say, wow. When we said bring your A game, this is what we expected. I can't breathe. I am Zicho. Welcome to the 2017 grand finale of the TM Pick and Pay Battle of the Chefs, brought to you by Zimgold. Hundreds of chefs from across the country all applied to be on the show, but only 16 were selected to approach the battle stations. And after 12 weeks and over 30 challenges of intense competition, only four remain, and they are the best of the best. Facing the arduous task of deciding who will walk away with the grand prize today will be our faithful judges panel. Our judges for today are Chief Judge Steve Hyde, the Head of Division for Food and Beverage Operations at the Bronte Hotel and Executive Chef of Emmanuel's Restaurant, Judge Sherilyn Conlon, Qualified Chef and Part-Time Cooking Instructor, and Diankara Chef, Judge Taf Anifasi, Private Chef and Battle of the Chefs 2015 Champion. For the final time, we welcome back Chef Wilson. Uh, when I started the competition, I wasn't thinking I would go this far. Since I, I made a lot of mistakes during the, the first episode and uh, my dishes were not appealing. Wilson, for you to be in this competition, Chef, you must be cooking above what you have done right now. This is too ordinary for me. You know, in competitions, you don't lose, but you learn. And also cooking is an art. We learn every day. We adjust every day. So I will take uh, the many dishes that I've learned in this competition and I will go, go away with them and try to apply it in my life. Chef Common? I don't know, it was just supposed to be a fun experience, you know. I didn't really have any huge expectations. Out of four challenges, so far I've won three. So, um, I think I've done pretty well. This is brilliant. It tastes as good as it looks. I think the whole experience has been really special. I mean, this time last year I could barely walk, and this year I'm on a cooking show, you know, on TV, and I'm in the finals. Chef Dylan. To be in the finals feels amazing. I, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to get this far, I didn't expect to. Uh, when I first started in the first episode, the way the first episode went, I thought I was gonna go <laughs> much earlier on in the competition. Uh, but I think I've learned stuff along the way and that's helped me, helped me grow. I love the story. I love that you're putting yourself on the plate. 
now that I'm here, I'm, I'm, I, I deserve to be here and I'm going to win it. And Chef Sharon. I have no fear. I, I'm here to cook and to do my best and to enjoy myself. And I mean, I love food and I love, I love cooking and I love the flavors and I love, I, I love to eat. So you know what, it's, it's for me, this is, this is my passion. Just turn around, I want to see what's at the back of your head. <laughs> Thank you. I've seen two sides of you. I feel like I've grown as a person, I've grown as a, a chef. Because I can't, I, I've always said wanna be chef, but I think at this stage, uh, I am a chef. Now chefs, today you are battling it out over three courses. Starter, mains, and dessert. Now normally our judges would keep an eagle eye on you from the lofty perch throughout the day. But this is the final, so we're going to do things a little differently. Today, the judges will judge your efforts blind. Shortly, they will receive four menus, but they will not know who will cook which menu. After each course is prepared, they will return to taste, give their full impartial critique, and score your dishes. At the end of the day, the chef with the highest score will be announced TM Pick and Pay Battle of the Chef's Champion. To start off the day, a starter. Your first challenge is to make a starter of your choice. You have 40 minutes for this challenge. Your time starts now. Uh, so for my starter, I've decided to make a bouillon base. It's a French soup that originates in Marseille, I believe. For mine, I've added some, some prawns, uh, some prawn heads, some shells, and then some, also some crab claws. Yeah, to try and just sweeten it. I am making a duck salad, basically. Well, my intention is to do something simple, but that has a few aspects that shows some kind of technique. So the first thing I do is peel my sweet potato, and then I put it in water, and then um, I squeeze my nachis, and I put the juice in, and I let that boil. I took my beef filet, I removed the senior and also cut them into cubes. And I started marinating them with uh, some rosemary, some black pepper, some salt, a bit of wine, and uh, some oil and mix it. The duck itself has a gamey flavor, so I didn't want to um, over season it or spice it because I didn't want it to have any other flavor but itself. So I wanted the duck to be, you know, the star of itself. So all I did was season that with um, salt and pepper. I've gotten to see myself on TV. It's been interesting and I'm like, and you know, like my kids are like, Mom, you make so much noise. Mom, you're always making Whiskey. noise because I do it anyway. At this stage, uh, I'm making my vinaigrette. I first took uh, some mustard and uh, some garlic vinegar, one lemon squeezed, and then I put my seasoning, some salt and, my, and some pepper. I also took an, an avocado and I uh, started uh, uh, whisking it. Uh, so on the pan, I've got my prawns uh, and crab, and they, I'm trying to get a bit of color on their shells, you know, because that helps, helps bring out some flavors. Um, I need to, to add some stuff, so I add leek. I don't want to use onions, it's a bit too, too much. Uh, so I chop up some leeks as fast as I can, put them on, add a few spices, some paprika, um, some turmeric, uh, and some fish stock. For the final episode, you really want to bring your A game, you know, you want to do your best. Uh, I mean, it is a... Battle of the chefs. I mean, the whole point is to push yourself and do things that you've never done or that you don't usually do. And that's what I've done the whole series, do something that I've never made or tried before. So I wanted to sort of stick with the same guns. <laughs> I had previously pre-cooked pre my barley. I fried that with, my, with tarragon, mushrooms, and a little bit of lemon juice. And I put a little bit of balsamic vinegar just to give it a, just a little bit of depth. Uh, so I've got some tilapia fillets, uh, skin off, um, but uh, I've got this idea to make a bread crust on top. So I get a couple of rolls, slice them out, put some spice on there, roll them as thin as I can, uh, put a bit of flour, a bit of egg, and I stick the bread to the, to the fish. When, I, when my sweet potato is done, I put it into the blender with butter and um, some nachi, some nachi peel. 
trying to be different and trying to to have a fresh flavor. Uh, I decided to use uh, some sweet potato chips. So I decided maybe I can put a sweet potato so that I can add a bit of crispiness. My mopani in the oven, when I checked in the oven, I, there was no progress. So I decided I should just fry them in the pan. When they reached uh, the crispiness that I desired, I started uh, making some sort of kebab. After five episodes, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this whole timing thing. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've learned that it's better to, to take your time on your plating rather than rush your plating, and it's better to rush your prep rather than take your time on your prep. And it seems to be working, it seems to be working. The, the difficult thing is with like these competitions, like, okay, yes, I can practice at home, but I practice at home with what I have at home. So it's not 100% the same. So unless you're using the same tools, you can't expect the same outcome. So it's really 50-50. Either the outcome's gonna be better than what you prepared, or it's gonna be worse. When it comes down to my plating, you know, I've got a big white bowl and I don't want any negative space onto that. So instead of breaking the bowl uh, with, with the food, I decide to put a black plate underneath and then that should, should tie it all, all together, the plating wise. Um, I don't want to pour the, the blonde base together with the fish just yet because I, I want them to see the work that's gone yeah. into that fish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I put that to the side in a little jug, uh, hoping that they'll then pour the blonde base in with the fish. Uh, the first thing that I put under the, the bowl was the sweet potato and I also put my beef filet that I just fried and after that I put uh, my quail eggs and my cherry tomatoes. I put my crispy sweet potato on the side. 30 seconds remaining. <laughs> at 30 seconds to go I realized that I hadn't put my sauce onto my mushroom so at like 30 seconds I'm now trying to to add to my sour cream. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up and step away from your battle stations. I left my plums. This looks amazing. Step away from the battle stations. Looking what, what what the other chefs did, I was seeing all nice, nicely presented dishes. I was a bit worried. First, we have Chef A starter, which is a boya base. Please have a taste. Which is what? Boya base. Mm -hmm. It's got a spout. Mm -hmm. If he gets wrinkles on his forehead. That means he doesn't like her. Serious? Well, that's what I've picked up. Let's check. Beautiful. It's subtle. That broth that is there, and this is, for me, is a very balanced dish, and that prawn, mm. absolutely perfectly cooked for me. Mm. Yay. Yeah. I think it's kind of, for me, maybe I would say the, the soup there is a bit loose. I would maybe reduce it just a little bit more. Yeah, that's what uh, other than that, it's a really lovely dish. I love the look of it. I love the colors. Thank you, judges. Next up, we have Chef B starter, which is a duck salad with a plum sauce. Unlike the first one, the flavor is not coming through. I'm not feeling the love coming, emanating from the dish. The duck, not enough seasoning for me. Well, um, a vibrant looking dish. Looks lovely. Uh, a little bit clumsy to eat, because, you know, when I'm getting long things like that on a fork, and one thing I can't stand is when people don't just nip off the edge where they're just starting to deteriorate. The sauce is a bit overpowering, too thick. It's simple, not too mm. many processes had to go in here. But I like the combination of mange too, the mushrooms and the uh, baby leaf. Very attractive. Thank you, judges. We have Chef C starter, which is a sweet potato maple bacon soup. Please enjoy. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh my god! 
I can't see the correlation between the two aspects that are on the, on the board. The soup, yes, it's got quite a, a reasonable flavour, but I don't like the texture uh, because it's uh, not been passed. Mm. Um, yes, I gather it's meant to be like that, but personally, for a soup, I like to have a nice, smooth texture on the tongue. This and is I not, this is grainy. so many times. And the, uh, I think it's wheat. Um, undercooked. What's undercooked? The wheat. Judge Chef, your thoughts? The soup, yes, the texture is not great, very grainy. Mm. I love the flavour. A bit of confused also. What's the point of the second dish? Okay. Uh, together, then it becomes too big. It's no longer a starter for me. I would take that sour cream and put it in the soup to balance it all out. So it's a bit confusing. For me, the, maybe the sweet potato wasn't cooked enough. That's why it's so grainy and lumpy. This is very salty and this is very sweet with the maple bacon. Um, I think it's, it's too much. Potato, <laughs> tarragon. But I like the little wooden board. Oh. Chef D's starter is a rosemary beef fillet with sweet potato, mopani, and quail eggs. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a smile. See that? Those chips are nice and crunchy. Sweet potato. I love sweet potato. Sweet potato, yeah. sweet potato, sweet potato and beetroot chips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a main cousin. That's all right. Look, he's finishing the plate. Good. Quite a nice little salad. Um, certainly is rosemary um, flavoured beef. Uh, the beef's a little bit stewed for me. I have to agree with you, Shelley, about the boiled beef. Mm. If there was a bit of caramelisation on there, it would have been better. I agree also, and I think in a final, the little details matter, so appearance doesn't count, but you know, when it comes to points. It, it isn't everything, okay. it does count. At this level and at this stage. But the, the, the presentation, sorry to cut you off, it was quite pretty initially, and then you did throw it over the whole plate, so surely maybe that's why it's not looking pretty. Okay, I can see your point. How do you eat it out of a little exactly. jar like that? I know all day. <laughs> you just put a spoon. <laughs> Serious, that's how we eat it. But still a good attempt. Thank you, judges. Welcome back, chefs. We have officially started the final. And now, only two challenges before one of you claims the grand championship. After a nice starter, one always looks forward to a delicious main course. And for your second challenge, you will make just that. You have 50 minutes for this challenge. Your time starts now. Uh, the main course I've decided to make is uh some grilled chicken thighs uh, with bacon, a bit of spinach and parmesan cheese with chicken liver. And I'm serving it with our cauliflower puree and butternut. Uh, so essentially what I'm making is a, is a meat and three veg, pretty much. Um, it's a standard meal we have, you know, three times a week all over the world. And I know what's gonna take the longest is my puree. So that I, I get that on the go first thing. Um, I decided to make a chicken curry because um, for as long as I can remember, chicken curry has been something we have every Sunday. Yeah, so I wanted to do my mom's chicken curry. Uh, I need to get my rice on, I need to start my curry, I need to chop my onions, I need to chop my chicken. I am making a spinach pasta um, in a creamy seafood um, sauce with um, prawns and a fennel pickle. My right, first thing I do is get my broth going because that's got to develop flavor. So I just chopped up the veg, chuck that in the pot, um, wait for that to start browning, deglaze that with some white wine, and then add a bit of water, and then I just left that alone. Uh, I've never made this dish before. This is my tactic for the final, to do dishes that I've never done before. Uh, more like an experiment. But in terms of the chicken, I always cook chicken and it always tastes nice. 
So I thought that maybe I can complement the chicken with adding uh, some spinach, some bacon, and as well as uh, chicken liver. Um, this is the reason why I chose this dish is I've made it a few times, um, and each time I make it, I try something different, and I, you know I try and tailor it as best I can. And this is this is like the final product. I've asked the the butcher there, pick and pay, to to have my fillet rolled in a, in a specific way. Um, I put a lot of spice rub on the outside because when you cut it, your cross section is, there's not much surface area when you taste it. That's why you heavily, heavily spice, you heavily salt the outside. So, so I've added my curry powders, I've added my, my spices, uh, my chicken, so I start cooking my chicken, tomato puree. I added my coconut milk and then I let that simmer. Then I added my coriander. I added a bit of um, fresh cream and then I d and my peas and then I just Jess, let it you are seep halfway through. through your time. 25 minutes remaining. The next step is to um, get the spinach down to almost a puree. Um, I like it with a bit of texture in it so you can see the green specks in the pasta. Um, so I pureed that together with um, the eggs and then I added the flour to that. And then once that dough was together, I covered in cling wrap and I let it sit for a while. Looking at the time and the minutes that are left, and also considering the, the number of elements that I want to put in my dish, uh, I decided to increase my speed. Uh, maybe better than the usual. See my face. <laughs> So, you know, time's, time's going, time's going, you know, I'm worried about plating, I've got, you know, so many little pieces I want to get on. Um, I'm not too worried, uh, maybe a little bit, you know, in the back of your mind you're always thinking about, you know, when you have meat and two veg, there's always a hearty gravy to go with it. I'm substituting that for a puree, is it enough, isn't it enough, I don't want to overpower anything, so that's all very stressful, but... I think I can, I think five I can minutes remaining. We had about five minutes left. I had nothing on the plate. So it was literally a matter of, well, try and do it again and get one perfect dish or have... <laughs> so I had to just get what I had on the plate as fast as I could. I decided to, to, to put my rice in a, in a pudding bowl and to put it on the plate so to... to to, f to mold it. Two minutes remaining. I'm thinking my mom's probably having a heart attack watching this. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Like, this poor woman, like, why can't she come on set when I'm really doing well and, you know, I can actually show that I do have some skill in the kitchen. I mean, today, I think all we see is all the ideas and thoughts that I had, but the process was just not there. So it's disappointing. I mean, it is the final, and this is where you want to show that you know you've actually grown. And to sort of flop at this stage is kind of, you know. You know, it's the finals. I want to do a little bit of a, you know, I want to step up my game. Uh, you know, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that just that little bit extra. Thirty seconds remaining. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up and step away from your battle stations. Oh my God. <laughs> Chef A's main is a beef fillet with mushroom and butternut carrot puree. They're gonna say there's too much stuff on the plate. You don't need the piggy. Well, he's still grazing, so that's a good sign. Still grazing. Still grazing. He's not the main. The beef is cooked well, surprisingly. But there's no starch, as far as I can tell. And it's crying out for a sauce, in my opinion. It's a bit odd for me to see raw and cooked products on the same plate. But? But I concur, screaming for a sauce. <laughs> I don't think it needs a sauce. 
I think the purees are enough for me. Um, I love the sweetness of the onion, the freshness of the raw ingredients. It is different, and I wish I could hear the story behind it. And we would understand it a little bit better. But I like it. It's a great eat. Chef B's main is a pasta verde with creamy prawns. This is so nerve-wracking. This is so whack. This is like the worst I've done this whole season. As long as your prunes are cooked. I'm glad it's these three judges. I hate him twice. That's, it. That's tough. The prawns are OK, but it's not in-your-face wow flavors. I'm getting pepper and lots of it. Generally over-seasoned for me. It's all right. The prawns are, are not overdone, but they're a little bit boiled. Um, the little pickle is, is nice, a bit tart, so it kind of assaults the flavours of the pasta. Yeah, a bit disappointed. I would have to agree, as Judge Steve says, the predominant flavour is pepper and, for me, some chilli, I think. Mm, some chilli. That's really overpowering and then you don't get that, you know, subtle flavour of the prawns. Chef C's main is a chicken curry with a banana raita and spiced basmati rice. Please enjoy. I've never cooked rice in my life. What? I don't cook rice. I can't cook rice. I can cook basmati, I realized today. <laughs> oh, that one's drinking water. <laughs> uh, the challenge with the uh, curry I feel is that you have to develop the flavor. And sometimes the curry is always best the next day because it needs to, you know, kind of develop the flavor. So <laughs> curry in the final has to be a really good curry. Yeah, I also have a difficulty with it. It's very ordinary. The flavor of the curry is okay, but it hasn't permeated the meat at all. Um, and same again, the cut of meat that I've got is very gristly. Um, so I'm not sure, it hasn't been prepared very well. The rice I thought was fairly bland, mm. it's meant to be spiced. The uh, <clears throat> raita for me, no, you should, fine dice okay. of banana for me. Fine dice, again, I dice, fine dice of banana. Mm, this is not a $10,000 dish. It's hard to know exactly what they want. It's it's very difficult. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm just confused, to be honest. Chef D's main is a grilled chicken thighs with cauliflower puree and baby eggplant. Oh, eggplant is not there. I forgot to put eggplant. Ah, uh, the English that they say first impressions last to come last. I think it's kind of a terror because uh, when the judges are first disappointed, oh, I think they will maintain the same. Well, I think that's quite a well-constructed dish. Yay, well done. Some nice flavors coming through. Okay. Um, and some work has been put into this. Uh, the thighs, I think, most probably boned them out himself. But those purees, yeah, nice balanced flavors. In this case, I won't concur with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. The flavor of the red one here, it tastes kind of uh, like store-bought puree or tomato paste or something to that effect. Okay. I think a lot of effort has gone into here. There's a lot of purees. Um, I'm just not sure where the eggplant came in and it's a lot of protein. Is it a finals dish? I am left disappointed. Mm. What's a final dish? Yeah, I think uh, the challenge is uh, when, when, when you are told to do what you think is best and your best will not apply to the judges. I, I think that's where the challenge lies. 
So there's one last challenge before you decide on a winner. Which menus so far are closing in on the crown? We've got one challenge left, right? And that could be a pivotal challenge. I'm waiting for that wow dish. That dish that tells me this is the person who deserves this money. That's what I'm waiting for right now. I want to see the passion. Where's the passion in these plates? This is it. This is the final challenge for the final episode. Now, if you have any tricks up your sleeve, now is the time to pull them out. This is the dessert challenge. And once again, what you make is entirely up to you. You have one hour for this challenge, so make sure that every minute counts. For the final time, on your marks, get set. Your time starts now. You know, if you're playing golf against chefs like these, I'm going to use my favorite clubs. So beetroot, beetroot, beetroot. Um, so I'm going to make a beetroot sorbet um, with a few other elements. I've made some candied lemon peel. Uh, I've made a honeycomb that I'm going to put down. Uh, a bit of popping candy to make it all a bit exciting. I'm making a date, pecan and raisin cake, spiced with ginger and cardamom with a lemon mascarpone cream and a butterscotch with cardamom. I'm making a chocolate ganache tart with a coffee mousse and a raspberry coulis. Um, with some toasted almonds and just raspberries and lit chocolate. Well, I was trying to combine my biggest cravings at the moment all in one. So the tart is basically like a cookie dough. So I'm obsessed with cookies at the moment. I can eat so many. <laughs> the dessert I've decided to do is uh, cheesecake. And uh, I wanted uh, it the best to, to have a bit of hint of chili with it, so that I can incorporate uh, some, some of our stuff in Sim. And also, I wanted to put a bit of butter to give it a bit of a flavor. And also, I want to make uh, ice cream to go with the, the dessert. I've decided to go as fast as possible in the beginning, uh, and then if I've got time left over, add another element, uh, instead of panicking right at the end. Um, and I need to make a gelatine just so the stuff will set. Uh, so I start that, uh, then I start peeling some citrus so I can get some candied peel. So to make, make a basic cake, and then I beat my, my, my butter and my sugar, and I add my eggs, and then I add flour, my, my raisin mixture. And then from there, I start on my, my cardamom sauce. So I basically butter, caster sugar, and, and sour cream. Can't have a tart that doesn't have a filling, so that's the next thing I do is get the chocolate on the stove to melt down. And then um, when that's done, I put the coulis on because that's got to reduce and boil. Uh, I'm not really good at dessert. Uh, I, I try and uh, teach myself how to be good in desserts. So most of my desserts uh, are mostly experimental. I'm putting the mixture for the cheesecake filling and uh, because of the tray that I decided to use, it was running out of the tray. So uh, I do have a challenge whether it was set or not. And also most of my mixture ran into the tray. I start my honeycomb by putting uh, some, some caster sugar, a little bit of vanilla, some vinegar to try and stabilize it, a tiny bit of water, put it on the heat. Uh, then I get a, um, a paintbrush to take uh, the crystallization off the side of it because I don't want it to crystallize, I want it to stay nice and clear. Uh, so every couple of minutes or so, you, you, you just take the water around the, the pot to test. get rid of those crystals. Um, it's been really awesome. Like, and I mean, I've worked with some amazing people. Um, some amazingly creative people. I've worked with um, with people that are that are professional, and I mean, I I, I personally feel I haven't done re really badly, um, and it's it's been great, and uh, and I appreciate what I've learned. And you know, everybody brings something different to the table, so it's been good. I want to make some banana ice cream. I take two bananas, chop them up, put them in the blender, put my fresh cream, condensed. Uh, milk and the egg whites. And then I, I whisk them in the in the blender. Put my mixture in the bowl, and I wrap it and put it in the freezer. My honeycomb is looking good, uh, and before it gets too hard, put a bit of salt on it. So I want a bit of a salty kick. Time's counting down. I want to make a meringue. Uh, I want to pipe that onto the 
uh, onto my plating so it, it looks good because uh, I, I want the con contrast between the color of the beetroot and the brilliant white of the meringue. Um, so I'm beating away, it's just not beating fast enough, time's counting down. Uh, I keep whisking it to grab another whisk, uh, try and get as much air in it as possible in the shortest space of time. If my eyes could cook it, I'd be so happy. Just wait. <laughs> so I was like, if my eyes could cook it, I'd be so happy. But uh, yeah, um, I was in. I, I, I was in in time. Yeah. I really don't want to be behind time, and I want to make sure everything is happening. I mean, whisking the cream. That was. That's always the worst for me, though. It's because it takes so much time, and I just feel like I could be focusing on another element. You know. I mean, the Battle of the Chefs competition is. It's, it's just been a hell of an experience from. You know, from your auditions all the way up to now, you know, it's been, it's been fun the whole way uh, and I've loved every minute of it. 50 minutes left in the challenge, you know, my sorbet is still, it, it, needs, it needs to be aerated, my, my meringue needs re-whipping. Um, so I know that's going to take the longest, so I start with that. I want to make a bit of strawberry sauce so that I would give a, a bit of color to my dish. Uh, frying the mini pan with uh, a bit of honey, rum and a bit of uh, golden syrup. And after that, I blended it and then I put in a small bowl. Uh, I'm confident with my flavors because, um, you know, it, it, there is uh, quite a few different flavors that are, that are in there. I'm hoping that they all play and mar together to create an explosion in the mouth. Five minutes remaining. My cheesecake wouldn't set, so I, I wanted to put something on the plate with all the elements. So I decided to cut my, my base of my cheesecake as well with the part that didn't set. And I added a bit of fresh cream and I put my ice cream that I made. Um, so now I've got, to, uh, I've got the plating. I want pops of color everywhere. Uh, so I've got the red from some candied beetroot, so that goes on. Uh, I've got the gold from the from the honeycomb, that's that's already on there. I've got a, a lemon jelly, which is nice and a vibrant yellow, so I put that on the on, on the corners as well. Um, and then lastly, I get my my sorbet. You know, I'm I'm trying to shape it with the spoons. There's a special name for it. It escapes me, and I put it put it on the plate, and it's I'm I'm happy. One minute remaining, chefs. For all of you people who are planning on entering next year, this is a lot harder than you think it is. It doesn't look so complicated and difficult, but there's so much work that goes into it, and there's um, so much hard work that you've got to put into it as well. Um, but you will definitely learn something on every single episode, guaranteed. 30 seconds remaining. Seconds remaining. Stop and step away from your battle stations. Basically, this is not uh, the cheesecake. We just call it mess in a glass uh, with, with banana, ice cream, and strawberry sauce. But uh, I'm happy with the way it looks. Uh, I know this all very icy. Um, but it's the best I can do, and it's, I'm happy with the dish. It's, it's, it's what I had pictured in my head. Yeah, we're all winners, and whatever happens today, um, I'll be 100% happy with. We present to you Chef A's dessert, which is a beetroot sorbet. Wow, we were wondering how this was going to be served and so hoping it wasn't going to be just in a glass or something. And this has been done freehand, been made without a churn. So uh, although the sorbet is a little bit icy, um, all the other elements that go into making this creation is amazing. Mm. I'm blown away. Innovation on a plate for me. Beautiful appearance, nice flavors, and that popping candy mm. and the honey. <laughs> it, it just adds to <laughs> a dish which just, for me, works. Mm. You think of beetroot, you never think dessert. 
lovely to look at, lovely colors, lovely textures. Beautiful. Oh, now you've got it. Chef B's dessert is a chocolate tartlet with coffee mousse and toasted almonds. Please have a taste. Like, why do you want to do that? Like, Because he's a chef and he needs to check how it's... Like, just eat it, damn it. <laughs> Surprisingly, not a lot of well, chocolate flavor there. Which is not bad for me because I'm not a fan. <laughs> so, what person I'm okay with that. Uh, the coffee is coming through in that mousse. And it goes well with the raspberries, obviously. The coffee mousse is nice and the, the raspberry coulis. You know, it works, the dish works, and it's attractive, it's clean. Just Sherilyn. Very nice little chocolate tart there. Um, I like her chocolate pastry, or his chocolate pastry. All very classic flavours that all complement each other, raspberry and coffee and chocolate. It's... Yes. I would order that. Fantastic. Chef C's dessert is a date pudding. He's frowning. <laughs> Going with Chef C's total menu, I think that's a little bit heavy. But the flavours are nice. They're there. Flavours are nice. Thank you, Judge. Judge Taff, what are your thoughts? I love... Uh, it's not too sweet for me. What I find sweet is the glaze, though, on top there. I don't think that was necessary to put it on there. It's coyingly sweet. Had whoever made this left that out, I think I would have, you know, given it top marks. But I love the flavor. I love that it moist, it's not it dense. It's a lovely little surprise of a lemon curd or something at the bottom there that sort of cuts through all the sweetness for me. Uh, my only criticism would be plating. It's, it's clumpy. You could have done something a little bit more elegant and um, dainty and we're a little bit bombarded with our nasturtiums tonight, but Today otherwise a great, a great dessert. Nasturtiums. <laughs> so Chef D's dessert is a mess in a glass with banana ice cream and strawberry sauce. I'm getting a strange chili the back of my throat. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, very interesting. It's kind of like a frozen banoffee sundae. Very Moorish. Um, not your most attractive dessert, but it is called a mess. Mm -hmm. The name of the dish suits it <laughs> perfectly <laughs> because it's a mess. Personally, I don't like to see desserts in glasses. But that banana flavor's coming through nicely. Mm. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, the chili kick. Is it a good kick? It works. So, well, for me it does. Taff? I like the ice cream, surprisingly. Not as smooth as you like, but it's, without having an ice cream machine, that's a, that's a good attempt. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. Well, then that was definitely a journey, wasn't it, judges? What's your take on, on the whole season, Judge Sherilyn? I think we've seen lots of talent this season. Um, and I think we've certainly enjoyed it. Judge Taff, your first season as a judge. What was memorable for you the most? I would say, having been in the first one, <laughs> just the development of the whole show and then the development of the chefs that have come through. And that the four that are in the final are those that have heeded the judge's advice. Identities have come through and... We definitely had the four in the final who deserved to be in the final. Mm -hmm. That's not been detrimental to any of the other competitors. But people have grown quite considerably. And the enthusiasm that's been demonstrated as well on every single episode has been phenomenal. I've been pleased to be part of this. It's been 
a great experience, meeting new people, seeing new ideas even. A great series. The time has come. I can finally reveal to you which menu belonged to which chef. Menu A belonged to Chef Dylan. Menu B belonged to Chef Carmen. Menu C belonged to Chef Sharon. And menu D belonged to Chef Wilson. The scores have been added up and decisions have been made. Judges? Chef Dylan, I remember your splat. <laughs> Remember you being nervous, but I also appreciate that you've developed in the competition, that you've shown yourself on the place, which is what I have been looking for. Sure. Chef Wilson, the cool, calm, and collected one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't think I've ever seen you flustered at any point, and what a journey. Chef Carmen, if we think about you, we just think about the pilot. That's all the judges can talk about is your cocktail you made. You're a small person with huge flavors and lots of passion. And I hope that you always keep that passion for food. Thank you. Well done. Chef Sharon. You are this huge character. You have won every one of your weekly challenges and you've always produced amazing punchy flavors. Well done. Thank you. You're clearly all amazing chefs, but there can only be one winner. Judge Steve, who is our champion? The winner of TM Pick and Pay, Battle of the Chefs 2017, is... Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Chef Dylan. Any final words for the judges? Thanks very much for yeah, the whole thing, for the advice. Just yeah, for geez, for guiding us in the right direction. Yeah, thank you very much for the whole the whole lot. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations once again to our 2017 champion, Chef Dylan. And congratulations to all the chefs who contributed in making this season a show-stopping extravaganza that it was. And we'd also like to thank our loyal viewers. We appreciate your support and participation throughout this season and hope to catch you next time. Until then, my name is Zichio. This is TM Pick and Pay Battle of the Chefs, brought to you by Zimgold. <laughs>